Hey Cool Worlds, it's David. So we just had another amazing announcement from the LIGO team this week and the world of astronomy is a buzz talking about this. So I wanted to tell you about it here on this channel. So to do that, I'm actually going to read from this story that I was sent, GW170817, which may very well be one of the most amazing stories that ever happened in the universe. So we're going to tell you about it here. And it begins a little bit like this. Long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, it sounds familiar as a beginning, the remnants of two dead stars collided together. They'd been born together, orbiting each other for eons and watching their sibling mature into a blazing, majestic star, lighting up their surrounding planets and moons and fusing lighter atomic elements into heavier ones as an energy source. After millions upon millions of years, the larger sibling of the two found that it had exhausted most of its initial supply of hydrogen fuel, and so it grew into a swollen behemoth on its deathbed. Finally, as its nuclear fire sputtered out, the star's immense self-gravity caused it to collapse in on itself, crushing the core with unimaginable pressures until even the protons and electrons were forced together, forming one giant atomic nucleus. At this point, the inward gravitational pressure could not exceed the intrinsic tensile strength of this newly formed giant atomic nucleus. And so the remainder of the star simply bounced off the surface in a spectacular supernova explosion, annihilating any planets that happened to be nearby. All the while, the other star was forced to observe what ultimately represented its own imminent fate. And indeed, it wasn't long before even the smaller star suffered the same death, and the stellar guts enriched in heavy atomic elements that were cast out from this binary star, flung out into deep space, seeding new stars, new planets, and maybe even new life. For a brief and short time, each star had watched the other gloriously outshine the rest of the galaxy. And when the dust settled in the quiet of deep space, all that was left was two lonely neutron stars. Spheres with the mass of our sun squeezed into the size of a city. And so they orbited one another, quietly, serenely, staring at their once majestic sibling who had now been reduced to a remnant of its former self. But this orbital dance wasn't eternal because friction from gas, dust, and dynamical perturbations of nearby stars slowly eroded away the orbit of this binary neutron star system until they became close enough that they were orbiting one another at dizzying speeds, forced to orbit one another, constantly accelerating round and around the two dead stars radiated away ever larger gravitational waves into the cosmos. Ripples in space-time slightly stretching and squeezing anything they passed through. And these waves carried away energy too. And so the neutron stars found themselves orbiting ever closer and closer and closer, warping the fabric of space-time ever more. These siblings who had once shined so brightly spent billions of years separated at great distances, were now spiraling together, racing towards one last final moment where they might shine again, a cosmic crescendo to complete their fateful story. As they plunged into each other, the ripples in space-time grew from a whisper to a roar. As their masses coalesced, some of the subatomic nucleons fused together creating hundreds of Earth masses worth of heavy atomic elements. Elements such as cesium, osmium, and gold, much of which was flung into deep space by the explosive force of the collision. The intense collision lit up the heavens, producing gamma ray radiation, and the matter flung off, heated up, glowing brightly like a star, at least for a short time. The cosmic cataclysm was over. The binary star GW170817 was no more. Meanwhile, back on the Earth, it was 130 million years in the past from now, a time that we call the Cretaceous period. It was a time when dinosaurs, such as the Tyrannosaurus rex, the Velociraptor, and the Triceratops wandered the Earth's surface. As evolved as they were, these creatures had no concept of merging neutron stars, other galaxies or ripples in the fabric of space-time. And so as the final gravitational waves from GW170817 left their home and propagated deep into space, it seemed as though no one would hear their final song. 
No one would even know that these two stars lived and died. The Earth was a changing place as well, and about halfway along the gravitational wave's journey, the Earth was struck by a giant meteorite which extinguished the age of the dinosaurs on the Earth. As the waves came closer, rodents and small mammals emerged from this destruction and slowly evolved to fill the biological niches which had opened up by the absence of these dinosaurs. As the gravitational wave came within just a million light years of the Earth, a mammalian ape was standing on two feet, making simple tools and sometimes looking up at the stars and wondering about who they were. Maybe someone might just catch this last swan song of the binary star after all. When the wave entered the last 0.01% of its 130 million year journey to the Earth, these new creatures called humans started farming the land, domesticating animals, and building small cities and towns. In the last 0.001%, the humans argued to each other that the Earth must be the center of the universe that the heavens were occupied by the gods. Just after passing the 0.0001% mark, a human being named Albert Einstein was born on the Earth, who would one day realize that space could be distorted by gravitational bodies. And this ignited a spark on the Earth that would one day lead a small group of humans to build a machine capable of detecting such distortions. About the time that the gravitational wave from GW170817 was halfway between the Earth and our nearest star, Proxima Centauri, humanity completed a machine to detect such waves, and they called it LIGO. On August 17th, 2017, the ripple passed through the Earth, stretching it by a distance smaller than the width of a proton. But humanity saw it, and they realized that they were looking at the merger of two neutron stars for the first time in their entire history. Just two seconds later, another one of their telescopes monitoring gamma ray radiation saw a flash of the same part of the sky, the collision. Over the next few weeks, other optical telescopes saw a new luminous source in the sky at that very point, fading rapidly as the energy from the collision radiated away into space. By looking at the colors of the light that they saw, Earth's astronomers realized that heavy elements had been formed in that giant collision, and that, as they had long theorized, the merger of neutron stars was one of the major sources of particular heavy elements in the universe. And that meant that the gold that the humans had dug up from the ground and sometimes wore on their fingers in a decorative manner very likely, once upon a time, was caught in the same kind of cosmic cataclysm. And so the story of GW170817 ends. But this isn't a fairy tale, this is real. And the story of gravitational wave astronomy has only just begun. The announcement this week by LIGO was historic, but there's still so much we don't know and need to learn from gravitational wave astronomy. For example, what was the product of this merger? Was it the heaviest neutron star we've ever seen or the lightest black hole we've ever seen? What is the structure of these neutron stars? And perhaps in their core, is it possible they could have exotic states of matter like quark cores, for example? It's an amazing time to be alive, to be able to look at an image that contains two colliding neutron stars and to be able to hear the ripple in space-time itself caused by that event. Historically, whenever we have built telescopes which can measure a previously inaccessible type of information, whether it be x-rays or radio waves, it has led to a revolution in our understanding of astronomy. And I think gravitational wave astronomy already and looks set to continue to do the same. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions about this neutron star merger, be sure to put them down below in the comment section. And until the next video, stay thoughtful and stay curious.